So here's a short follow-up video to the video I posted the other day about my autopsy results from opening up a pair of Battleborn lithium iron phosphate batteries that I pulled out of my local dump. And I thought I would just uh, address a few of the comments that there have been made about my last video and go over basically the how these batteries are assembled and put together. You can see they've got a BMS on top with standoffs which is great. Uh, the BMS balance leads for each uh, cell block are attached um, to each block in between each to read the voltages. You've got your temp sensor here taped down to the top cell and you've got your main uh, wires going into and coming out of the BMS that attaches to uh, the bus bar. Now, the way these batteries are designed is you have a bunch of cells that are uh, welded together and put into parallel with one another in order to increase the capacity. And then each of these blocks or modules is then uh, squeezed together to make contact with one another to put them in series to step up the voltage to 12 volts. And uh, so here, here's an example of, of one of the issues with this particular uh, design is you've got these nickel plated, uh, what are probably copper, thin copper plates that the cells are tack welded to. And on either side of the module, you have these plates. And then what happens is the plates of one module then must come into contact with the next and so on in order to create the series connection between each module. And so basically you can see each of these modules is probably built separately. And then the four modules are bolted together at the top um, by way of uh, bolts that are attached to the plastic. Now here's an example of a problem is this particular bolt in fact was very loose and the corner of this wasn't making very good contact. Um, but basically, you know, you've got a plastic cage and uh, you've basically got these modules or blocks and then you have these bus bars that have been attached to the outer end that act as the positive and negative bus bar. Now, my big complaint about this is you see how they're not bolted together on the bottom but only the top. So what this design relies on is basically that the, each block gets sandwiched together when the whole assembly is placed into a battery box and the, and the sides are shimmed with foam and plastic. That's how it's able to maintain a series connection. Now I wanted to point out in this video something someone else brought up in the comments, which was that they suspected that all of the pimples on the blue covering were due to corrosion and they were in fact correct. So I went ahead and stripped some of that back to show that um, these uh, definitely have cans that are corroded um, and that, uh, that basically are damaged um, from corrosion, not from overheating and blistering um, or any water vapor getting trapped. Here you can see the individual capacities that are handwritten from testing on each of the modules. Like I said, um, normally I would imagine what happens is these modules get built independently and they get measured and put on a shelf and then when they go to assemble a battery they pick uh you know modules that are uh, well matched for each other here's uh the positive battery lug issue that is the big complaint that everyone's talking about on this particular battery the lug was quite loose um the plastic didn't show any serious signs of melting but you can basically see that um it, it's it's not the tightest connection in the world and um, certainly over time, I would imagine this connection might get even looser as the battery expands and contracts and heat cycles with um, charging. Here, I, I thought I'd go ahead and show you a, another take on how a manufacturer uh, puts these uh, cells together in parallel and in series. Here you can see that they've used nickel plated copper strip tape and spot welded that together in a crisscross pattern and then um, basically each of those blocks is attached to the next and so on to create 
a serious connection. And you can see in this particular case, these suffered from corrosion as well. So I think in my next video, I'll discuss some of the details about the BMS in these batteries and maybe also start talking about different ways you can um, basically uh, fix the issues and uh, try to uh, salvage some of your investment and uh, get some, you know, some long-term use out of these without fear of, uh, you know, any serious failures or safety risks. Thanks for watching.